Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an HDR image using On One Photo Raw 2019. You could take a bracketed set of images and end up with something that looks like this. I think you'll find that it's really very, very easy to create an HDR image using On One Photo Raw 2019. For this demonstration, I have a set of five bracketed images. They're an exposure bracket, each spaced one stop apart. They range from two stops underexposed all the way up to two stops overexposed. And if we take a look at the one right in the middle, this is the one that is supposedly perfectly exposed, you can see that it's the interior of a church. Often the insides of buildings lend themselves very well for HDR photography because often the insides are relatively dark, but the windows will be relatively bright. And it's sometimes hard to capture all that dynamic range in a single exposure. Now, my camera has great exposure latitude, and you can see it really did a pretty good job with this image, but there probably is some minute detail in these windows here that it wasn't able to capture with this perfectly exposed exposure. So if we look at some of the darker ones, you could see that we're starting to get a little more detail in here in the windows. So once it renders, but you'll see that I think it's a better exposure for the windows, not necessarily the inside of the church. So I have these uh, bracketed set of images. So we have this one that's two stops underexposed. This one is one stop underexposed. And as you can see, it moved slightly. That's because they were handheld. I did not use a tripod. The next one is the one that was supposedly perfectly exposed. Then the next image is one stop overexposed. And this image right away, you could see some issues. If I zoom in on the columns here, you can see they're quite blurry. Uh, because it was such a slow shutter speed and it was handheld, I just wasn't capable of holding this one steady enough. So this image really is no good. Plus it's a little bright. We really don't need that one. And then the one that's two stops overexposed is even worse as far as blurriness is concerned. And it's really bright, so we don't need that either. So we really just need the, these three images. The one that's two stops underexposed, one stop underexposed, and the one that is perfectly exposed. So we'll select those three. I'm just going to click on one, hold the shift key in, and click on the other one at the end. So all three are selected. We're not going to take these two uh, into the HDR. So we're just going to do these three. We'll go over here on the right hand panel and we'll click on HDR. And what it will do is it's going to bring up the HDR dialog box. And from here, now we could look at the lower left-hand side and we could see here are our three images. And you'll notice that it pre-selected the one that is at EV 0, 0.0. And you could see that it has this little like uh, diaphragm of an aperture here. That's indicating that it's going to use this image as its base exposure and for deghosting. Now, there's really nothing moving in the image, so I don't really have to worry about deghosting. But as far as the base exposure, it's a little bit dark. I would prefer that it probably use this one. So what I'll do is I'll click right here on this little circle so that we move that, um, that little diaphragm over to that image. So this is the one that we're going to use as our base image or reference image for exposure. Now. Uh, right above it, you can see that the deghosting amount, we have uh, off, low, medium, high, very high. Um, for most images, you just need medium. An image like this where nothing was moving in the shot, you probably could get away with none. But because I did hand hold it, um, I'm just going to leave it at medium. Although really, whether or not you're hand holding the, uh, the shots or not really shouldn't matter as far as ghosting is concerned. Um, the only difference between these is that they'll take a little longer to render when you actually do your HDR. Uh, you could show the deghosting here. If you click, you could see whatever is turning red is where it's indicating there's some ghosting. And you can see it's mainly in the windows um, there. And the default look. Now you have a default look. You have natural, natural, auto, surreal. I'm going to leave it on natural. 
And because I handheld these images, I do want them to be aligned. So on one, we'll align them at the pixel level so they're, uh, they'll look like a single exposure. And when we're done with the HDR, once it creates it, I want it to open up in the develop module so we could do some processing. But we could do some pre-processing here. If you look over on the right hand side, we have tone and color adjustments. Now all of these, anything you adjust here, you could readjust later. So don't worry about adjusting here and going, oh, I, you're not baking it in is more or less what I'm trying to say. So you'll be able to come back in and readjust all this stuff later. So I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to do my best. I'll even bring structure up a little, bring contrast up a little, which I typically don't do. Now you could also pick a different camera profile. I'll stay with the on one standard profile. We could look at the HDR look. This is, you know, that HDR uh, look that you could get that looks horrid. We don't want that, right? So we're going to leave it at zero and all of that at zero. So I don't want any HDR look at all really applied to the image. So we'll go with this and we'll go over to the lower right hand side and we'll click save. And you could see now that it's going to come up with a progress box and it's going to create our HDR image. And when it's created, it's going to open up in the develop module. And you'll notice that the tone and color tab in the develop module will have these same settings in it because they're not permanent. Also, while it's creating it, I want to mention that if you want these five images to practice on, in the description below the video, I'll have a link so you could grab them. Um, they'll be free, but if you could make a donation, I would really appreciate it. I'll have it uh, like uh, defaulting to $5. If you can't afford to make a donation at all, just put zero in there and you're welcome to have them for free. If you could donate more than $5, that would be great and I'd really appreciate that as well. So look for that in the description below the video and you could practice um, with these same images that I'm using. All right, now it opened up in the develop module and you can see it's going to take a second to render but you'll notice on the right hand side where it says tone and color you can see all those adjustments i made are there so they weren't permanent we're able to come back in here and readjust something if we don't like it um, you can see there's details um, typically i mentioned many times i don't like doing that here and we have lens corrections and the lens corrections were done so i like everything i've done here i could bring it over to effects now but I think before I do that, I want to crop it. It looks a little crooked, doesn't it? It's really odd. If you look at this line right here in the tile of the floor, it looks very square to the bottom of the image. But overall, it seems like everything's tilted to the right. That's probably because I wasn't standing right in the middle and or I didn't really have my camera lens pointed directly straight ahead. And also there's probably some lens distortions involved as well, kind of making everything look a little odd. So we'll click on the crop tool though. And I think I want the middle to be right there. So what I'm gonna do first is, is I'm going to straighten it just by going off the image to the right. And you can see it turns into that uh, circle arrow thing. And I'll just push it that way a bit. And then I'm going to grab this handle here and pull it in. I just want the middle right there. Now I'm gonna look at this line right here probably should be perfectly horizontal. And when I come off the image, I get that circle arrow again, and I click with the left mouse button, you can see I get a tighter grid. I'm gonna make sure that tighter grid line is going perfectly horizontal along that line. Now you can see at the bottom, it made this line crooked. That's where it says it's kind of an odd, an odd thing, right? And I'm gonna pull it in just a little more because I do want this middle right in the middle. So that line right in the middle. You can see that I wasn't, my lens wasn't perfectly square. Uh, you could see at the bottom, it should be right here probably, and it's not, but that's all right. I like that crop. I'm going to click apply. And there we are. And now to me, maybe I overcompensated. It looks like it's leaning that way. I'm not going to fiddle around with it for this video though. You guys get the idea, but I will go to effects and I, you see how it has this HDR look, um, uh, filter on that was left over from when we made the HDR and you can see if I turn it off and on what it's actually doing to the image so I'm just gonna leave that as is I'm not going to do anything with that um, I could come in and try to bring highlights down 
maybe bring out a little more detail in the windows. I think that looks pretty cool. And then I'm just going to add a filter and I'm going to do my kind of old standby dynamic contrast. That's a little bit too uh, intense right there. So I think what we'll do is we'll see if I bring medium down. Or if I, if I actually click on natural and I just bring opacity down, that would probably work too. Like down to 30. I like that. I think that looks good enough. And then just to wrap it up, I'm just going to put a vignette on it. I'm going to look at big softy. I'm going to look at strong. I kind of like strong. And I'm going to pull it away a little bit from the middle. Just have it darken those edges a little bit. Get everyone to kind of look more towards the middle. And that's it. Um, I'm done. I mean, there's a lot more I could do if I wanted to. But the main thing was just to show you how to do um, an HDR um, bracket in on one photo raw 2019. You can see it's really super easy to do. And again, you're welcome to have the files. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below the video so you could check that out. And I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.